Hey and welcome to Tea with Tess, a weekly gathering of women across the world. I'm Tess Yana, co-senior pastor of Link Church and the founder of the Link Sisterhood and Tea with Tess. This moment was created with the heart to encourage and equip you in your personal faith journey. As we explore God's Word, I want to encourage you to lean in, subscribe and keep showing up as we go somewhere beautiful together. This is a place where you'll hear from me and some of my very special friends that are near to my heart. For more information and resource, visit tessianek.com or connect with me on Instagram at tessianek. We are in a series on Tea with Tess, I know, branching out here and doing something new and I really felt a few weeks back that we were going to, um, I really wanted to bring you in on the journey of my study and I've been studying the story of Deborah in the Bible and she is one of the the judges who rules Israel in a period where they are just losing the plot. And so she's actually one of the better judges. The the first three are good. Remember I told you they're amazing. They're not amazing, but they are good leaders. And then they get progressively worse from there. And Israel, the book of Judges is, ends with Israel in utter and complete ruin. And so Deborah is the judge that God has raised up in that particular moment in time to rescue and redeem Israel from the Canaanites and to, because they've repented, God has given them someone who can deliver them. And so she's amazing. Last week we looked at this idea and I said to you, um, the main thing that I want you to take home is to never underestimate the power of the word in the mouth of a mother. And we looked at this beautiful idea that um, the spirit of motherhood lies within every single woman. You do not have to have conceived your own physical children to have a spirit of motherhood. It's it's deposited into every woman and so we really wanted to strip the shame of women who've perhaps battled or can't have their own children or have chosen not to, to say that actually you carry a spirit of motherhood within you and you can use it to shape the world that you're in, to shape your, your, your sphere of influence. And the world is crying out for the mother, the mothers to rise in the season. And so we, we spoke a bit about what it looks like as for us as women, as mothers, to, to put our hands up and say, I'm here for it. I'm here to lead. I'm here to, I'm here to do something in this moment because the world needs it. And I'm not going to sit back and hold my gift back and hold myself back from the world. I'm going to lean into what God is calling me to, even though it's scary, because I know that when I do that, um, so many things are better off. And uh, I feel like last week we, ref- we reframed a little bit of what motherhood looks like. Um, this idea of homemaking, not just being about doing the washing and, um, you know, packing the school lunches or changing the nappies or whatever. This idea of homemaking is being culture shapers in our home, as being carriers of um, of culture, who, people who can who can shape atmospheres with who we are, with the words that we bring, with our wisdom, with our countenance, all the things. And then I just uh, reminded us all that we are not Plan B. That sometimes the world has told women that actually, you know what, because a man couldn't do it, because a man wasn't up for the job, like in the story of Deborah, God put a woman in, 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 the, pla- in the place of the man. And I just, I don't buy into that for a minute. We are never God's plan B. We are always God's plan A. And men and women together are highly a force to be reckoned with. And so... That is what I wanted you to remember from last week. I hope that brings you in on the story. If you are new here, I hope that you feel like you've caught up. That is my heart, that no one feels like they've left out or left behind. So today we're going into week two, and I'm going to read you a bit of the story, um, just so that we have a little bit of context. I'm going to bring you something new to take into your week, which I know is going to bless you. Okay, I'm reading from uh, Judges uh, chapter 4, verse 4. I'm going to read quickly. Um, So you need to keep up, okay? NIV, very simple, let's go. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, so we know she was a wife, amazing. You know, you can do big things and be a wife at the same time, in Jesus' name, was leading Israel at the same time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh and Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and lead them up 
to mount Tabor. I will lead Sisera, the commander of Javan's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. She's giving him a strategy for war. She's like, just do what I tell you. God has given us the plan. Go and do it. And Barak says to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. This would have been quite a cheeky thing for him to have said, just so you know. And Deborah responds in a gracious way. She says, certainly, I will go with you, said Deborah. But because of the course you are taking, because of the decisions you're making, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera into the hands of a woman. And so Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. She went to war. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. Now Heber the Kenite had left the other Kenites, the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree in Zinanim near Kadesh. When they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinor, had gone to Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Harasheth Hagoyim to the Kishon River all his men and his 900 chariots fitted with iron. This is why y'all don't read Judges, I get it, but it's important to take it somewhere. Then Deborah said to Barak, Go, this is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? And so Barak went down Mount Tabor with 10,000 men following him. At Barak's advance, the Lord rooted Sisera and all his chariots and army by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot this is the story okay of deborah and the battle that she fought or the battle that she is a part of and so what i want to bring to you this morning is is uh this idea that deborah was a voice deborah was a voice she had a voice but she was a voice we remember who she was uh, very very much so by the things that she said by the commands that she gave by the decisions that she made she was a voice she used what was inside of her to shift something and change something and I want to say to you this morning if you hear nothing else use your voice Use your voice. Because Deborah was a voice. She was a judge in the in Israel. But I want you to know that in your sphere of influence, no matter where you find yourself in the world, you are a voice. You're a voice. And so I want I want to bring some things to you this morning. If you are a voice, and I want I want to encourage you to do some things. Two things, actually. First one, use your voice. You are a voice. So use your voice to bring a shift. Use your voice to bring a shift. Now, there are many areas in our lives that could use some encouragement to change. I want to encourage us that as women, we are voices in society that are necessary to bring about a shift. And, when, and I'm not talking about a shuffle, like a shuffle. I'm talking about a shift. We can use strategically the voice that God has given us to bring about a shift in society, to bring about a shift in our homes. I don't know if you can relate to this, but there have been times where it's felt like the home that I'm, I have, you know, that I've been given to steward and lead is in chaos and these things are out of sync. The kids are all over the place. And what I do is I bring my voice to bring about a shift. No longer are we going to keep doing this this way. We are shifting in a new direction. We are not going to be going to bed at 8 o'clock anymore, girls. As much as you think you can handle it, you can't. We're going to bed at 7 because actually you need that extra hour to be awesome human beings. Sometimes it's to say to Dylan, I feel that right now this is a shift that we need to bring within the church. That God is doing something and I listen and I hear and I trust God to speak. And sometimes that looks like me saying to him, I know that we are planning this and I know that this is exciting. But I really believe God is calling us to shift, to do something new, to perhaps shift our attention to other things. Um, and so what, what it looks like for us as women is to put our ears to the ground and go, well, what is God saying? And then use our voice to bring about the shift that God wants to bring. And so oftentimes we disqualify ourselves. We're like, well, I don't know if God speaks to me and I don't know if I'm right. You're never going to know. But what's the harm in making a strong decision? I often feel like confident calls are the best ones. And so I want to encourage you. You are a voice, so use it. Use it to bring about a shift in your home. Use it, use it to bring about a shift in your marriage. Perhaps you need to bring about a shift in your workplace. And I'm not talking about being a rah-rah activist and getting on everyone's nerves. I'm talking about using the wisdom and discernment of God to help you to lead people in a way that they want to follow you in a different direction. 
It's not about being a nagging wife or a nagging woman that no one likes that. Um, I'm talking about really asking what's important, what needs to be said, what meetings should I have, what conversations, what questions should I ask, and then using your voice to shape something, to shift something. Um, I think that is very, very crucial on this season because there's so much out there. There's just so much chaos and no one really knows what they're doing. Let's be honest, none of us do. We all just feel like we're living one day at a time. And so I think the world is crying out for people to make confident, decisive calls because it brings security. And I think we've been, we're being asked in this season to, to be carriers of hope and perhaps bring that to the world. And so... I want to encourage you to use your voice to bring a shift. What are you saying? When you listen to yourself talking, when you, when you hear yourself speaking over um, your environments, your places of work, your, um, your home, what are you saying? What are the words that are coming out of your mouth? It's such a great way um, to just to figure out, am I bringing life to the situation? Am I, am I, am I, is there confidence? Is there clarity? Just listen to what you're saying. Take a moment not to just keep going, but to actually ask yourself, what are the words that are coming out of my mouth? Um, the, the Bible says such a beautiful thing in Proverbs. It says, the power of the tongue is life and death. Proverbs 18.21. So the power of the tongue is life and death. We so underestimate the power of that scripture. Oh my gosh, like seriously, the power of the tongue is life and death. I don't know about you, but that is a radical, radical statement for me. And every day we can shape our worlds towards life or towards death with our tongues. It's a powerful, powerful reality, but you need to listen to what you're saying. Amen. So the power of the tongue is life and death. I want you to ask yourself this morning, what am I saying? You know, what, what are you hearing in yourself, in your homes, the environments that you're in? And then the second thing I want to say to you this morning is use your voice to shape your world. Use your voice to shape your world. Do not underestimate. Last week I said to you, do not underestimate the power of the word in the mouth of mother. This week I want to say to you, do not underestimate the power of your confession, what you're saying. It's Proverbs 18, 21, if you are wanting to know. Do not underestimate the power of your confession, what you're saying. Dylan says this all the time. It is profound. Our words create worlds. Our words create worlds. And we can create a world of love and hope and um, energy and brilliance and passion and enthusiasm. Or we can create a world of something else. Perhaps of negativity or of um, dis despondency or disillusionment. And I just, I want you to know that the reality is in our homes, we the ones that are shaping that. I know that is, you're going to be like, oh, pressure. I don't want you to feel the pressure, but I just know this to be true in my home. When I, when I'm using my words to shape a world that is fueled with life in every part of our home, things change and the atmosphere shifts and, and it's just... I can tell the difference immediately, and I'm doing that. You know, Dylan brings something different to the table, but when it comes to shaping the culture of our home, I'm the one bringing that shift. And so I just want to encourage you not to, not to underestimate the power of your confession, what you're saying on a daily basis, what you're saying about yourself, what you're saying about your home, what you're saying about our country, what you're saying about our schools, what you're saying about our future. It counts, it matters, our words create worlds. And what Deborah did in this story is she brings a new narrative. She tells Barak the possibility of what could be if he trusted God, he'd been faithful before. And she also reminds him that he can do it and that there is, there is hope because God has never let them down. And she says to him, she says... Go, this is the day the Lord has given sister to your hands. She makes, a, she makes a concise, confident call and encourages him to step into who God is because he's been faithful to them before. She uses her voice to create a world of courage, to create an a, a atmosphere of courage. She uses her words to create a culture of hope 
in her in this army and she doesn't do it from a distance she goes with them she she travels with this army and she she puts courage into their souls and i love it i love that she uses her voice in that way um you hold a new narrative in your heart it's not just mine it's not just dylan's we are perhaps people who passionately pursue this in our everyday lives and it can look like oh my goodness you know they're always speaking positively about things but I want you to know that I'm not asking you to deny reality I'm not there's there's a lot of hardship out there and our lives can be very um, complex I'm not denying that life can be hard and I'm not asking you to do that either. In fact, denying reality and just putting a positive spin on everything can actually hurt us in the long run. That's not what we're doing here, but we're using our faith that God's given us to bring new words to create the world that we wanna see, not one of despondency and disappointment and disillusionment and brokenness and death but rather of life and hope and truth. And, and we, we hold that in our heart. And that's why I've been saying to you over the past year, can you cope, it's nearly a year. I've been saying to you, get this into your spirit. Get it into your heart, read it for yourself. It's, it's one thing to have all the preachers preaching at you, telling you all the things, but you need to get the word of God in your heart for yourself so that when everybody else around you is no longer there and you feel alone or perhaps you are navigating things where you're questioning what life is holding or where God is, you have something to stand on. You have words to use because oftentimes it's in the seasons where we are the most broken and despondent and disappointed that we feel like we have nothing to say, that we feel like we have no words to bring and yet this, this is what we can stand on in those times. We can actually physically take these words and speak them as our own and create something new for us to walk into, to use our words to create a new world. And so I wanna encourage you girls with voices, you are voices, so use them to bring about a shift. Use them to bring about a shift in your homes and your workplaces and your, um, your spheres of influence. Use your voice. And then also use your voice to create a world, to, what did I say here? Use your voice to shape your world, to shape the world that you want to see. Like I, for me, I want to raise girls that are incredibly uh, secure in their bodies, secure in their bodies, secure in their femininity, um, where they celebrate their bodies, they celebrate their changes, they celebrate, um, you know, a period in our house is going to be wildly celebrated. Okay, a few boys are watching, I don't know, whatever. But for me, it's a celebration. It's, not, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's not gross. It's not ugly. It's a celebration of who we are as women. And so for me, I use my words to shape that in our home. We talk about things in a positive way. We bring, um, there's just so much celebration and passion and, um, what's the word? We, uh, transparency around who we are as women and I'm really trusting that as we do that as that's what we shape right now God is going to uh, really nurture and the Holy Spirit will will produce girls that are very secure in who they are as women in their bodies in their femininity that they will not be ashamed that they will not perhaps compare themselves to the culture around them that says women should be a certain thing, but they'll know, no, this is who we are. This is what we saw and this is what was spoken over us when we were little and it's in our hearts. You can't, you can't undo that. We may wonder from it, but it's there. And so for you, that's an example of how I'm using my words every day to shape something in my daughters. Another thing is we're trying to strip shame off, this, off performance, strip the shame of having to do something to be someone. And so in our home, you don't get accolade predominantly for what you do. You are celebrated for who you are. And so when my children show up as their best selves, even when they don't feel like it, even when life is tricky and hard, they're celebrated. We go mad in our house for people who, or for children, who make good choices around character and um, 
just you know good old-fashioned goodness um, and yes I love it when Kenzie conquers a something in maths and I love it when Ani tidies her room and I think it's amazing that Taya can organize all the things but you know what that is not what is um, of utmost importance to, to us in our home and so we use our language to show them that that's awesome go you thank you for stacking the dishwasher but what's amazing is when you saw your sister and you chose her and you preferred her when she wasn't being amazing and what it produced in our what, what in that moment that forgiveness and that love and that that compassion shifted something and so we celebrate that we celebrate who you are not necessarily only what you do and so we're stripping off the shame of performance of having to perform and when I don't perform I'm not good enough that is not something that we are um, fighting for in our home because it's something that I've journeyed through and I believe my words can shape something different for their world and I feel like I'm talking a lot and I don't even know if it's going anywhere, but I just think that we must never underestimate the power of our words, especially in this season. I want to say to you, you know, there's a lot of people around us who are suffering silently. They really are. And it can be our kids. Um, it can be our friends. It can be our people in the workplace, it can be people in our churches, it can be, I don't know, I just have a sense that people are suffering silently and what this world is crying out for in their suffering is for women, mothers, to rise, to stand up and say, I'm here for it, I'm here for it, I'm not going to back down in this moment, I'm not going to join the crowd, I'm not going to keep going in the spiral of doom and gloom in this moment, because it is hard. It's hard enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be a carrier of hope. I'm going to use my words to bring about a shift and shape a world that can see that the future is bright. That this is what it is for now, but it's not the end. And so we don't sit here and, uh, you know, keep hanging on to the fact that, you know, this is awful and hard. We know that. We know that. We don't need to tell more people that it's awful and hard. Um, it is. <laughs> it is. So let's say it if we need to say it and then try and find something else to say. Something that can encourage someone else to lift their weary head and get up and keep going at it. That their business is worth saving, that their marriage is worth fighting for, that they deserve better perhaps, that they're enough, that their dreams are worth pursuing and the things that COVID has stolen are not in vain. And God will... He will restore to us the years that the locusts have eaten. He promises us that. And so I'm hanging on to those truths. I'm hanging on to that because if I keep looking at everything else around me all the time and I allow that to shape my words, I don't know. We may just get stuck here. And so I want to pray for us this morning. I want to pray for people, girls who feel like, okay, and you can raise your hands or not. I'm mean, going to just pray anyway. You feel like you don't, you don't have a voice. You don't have much to say. You don't know how, what to do with the Bible. You just feel like you don't have anything to offer. I want to pray for you and I want to ask God to remind you who you are, to help you go on a journey of figuring out who you are and finding your voice. Because I believe when we find our voices, the world will change. And then I want to pray for um, just just for God to put words in our mouths but that we would bring um, we would just be carriers of hope um, in every situation that we find ourselves okay so if you are here and you are wanting prayer this morning I want you to raise your hands I'm going to pray for a little bit and then we're going to go and we're going to change the world with our mouths amen Deborah was a voice but she's not unique God has put a voice in every single woman. There's a quote, and I've used it to shape my world and my life this year. It says, it's a prayer actually, and I pray it um, as often as I can remember, but it goes like this, bless the largeness inside of me no matter how I fear it. Bless my pens and my ink. Bless the words that I write and the words that I speak. May they be beautiful in your sight. May they be visible to eyes not yet born. And when I am dust, sing these words, she was a voice and so my prayer has been God 
I want to live my life giving my best away so that when I die and when I'm but dust, people will sing and remember of my life that I was a voice. And I use my voice to shape something and shift something for good. And if that's all that happens from my little life, it'll be enough. It'll be enough. Okay, I'm praying for you. Uh, all of the hands raised, I want you to just receive right now. Open your hands, open your hearts as the Holy Spirit begins to move. He is a no. He is not put off by a screen. Uh, I've had a lot of people challenge me recently and say that they don't believe the Spirit of God can translate through screens. I want to say to you that that is a mindset. Okay, it's not true. It can happen. The Holy Spirit can do whatever He wants when He wants. And if your heart is open and you are willing and you are believing for God to move in your life in this moment, I want you to know He will because He is faithful and He's true and He will always come through. That is our God and that is who he is and he's not about to stop doing that now. So I pray that every single woman who's raised their hands this morning, Holy Spirit, right now you are depositing truth into hearts and we can't necessarily feel it. We can't necessarily see it happening, but God, I just have this picture of truth, the truth of who we are and you being deposited deep down into the fabric of who we are as women, that we are a voice that we are a voice and each and every one of us has been given something unique and beautiful and strategic um, from, from the Spirit of God to bring to the world. And so I wanna, I wanna pray, awaken the voices. Awaken the voices, every single hand raised, would you awaken in Jesus' name the voice that lies deep down inside, where they have perhaps silenced themselves or allowed the world to silence them. I thank you, God, that right now you are beginning by the Spirit of the living God to awaken the voices. And I thank you that every single, every single mouth of every single woman watching this morning, which um, we say, yes, we're here for it. And we ask you, God, to use our mouths to be shapers and shifters of this world. And so thank you, Holy Spirit, that right now you're beginning to um, uh, just have a picture of, an, of a tongue becoming untwisted. Some of you, your tongues have been twisted by the lies that perhaps that you've uh, taken in over yourself. And into your heart, you believe things about yourself that are not true. And it's caused your tongue to become twisted. You can't speak because you don't know who you are. And I thank you right now, Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus, you are untwisting every single tongue. And in that, it's becoming this beautiful um, outworking of who we are so that we can speak from a place of truth, a foundation of truth. And so I thank you, God, for that is what you're doing. You are just here. You are here and you're raising up a beautiful, beautiful company of women of mothers who carry a spirit who carry a voice and i thank you that you're doing it that we don't have to strive and make it happen but that indeed by jesus um name everything is working out everything is happening we don't have to fret we don't have to worry and i thank you that um you holy spirit will continue to speak um speak words of affirmation and encouragement into every heart as we go from this place. You are blessed and highly favored of the Lord, girls. That is what the Bible tells us. Where your feet, every space your feet will, every place your feet will go, you are blessed. There is promise in every place that you set your foot. Believe the promises of God that you have been called for something greater. And even if you can't see it, and even if you can't feel it, that is the truth. Keep pressing into the truth and it will begin to make sense over time. I believe it. Amen.